Hello friends, this video on metals and non-metals part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now it is time that we talk about the chemical properties of metals because in physical properties we just spoke about the appearance, the external properties, the external behavior of metals and non-metals. Now we will see that how these metals react when they come in contact with some other chemical substance. So how that reaction happens and how those reactions are different in metals and non-metals. So that is what we are going to discuss in chemical properties of metals. So first of all, let us talk about how metals react with oxygen. Now where is oxygen present? Oxygen is present in the air. So if the metal is exposed to air, it should react with oxygen. So let us see how, it, how exactly it happens. Now almost all metals combine with oxygen to form metal oxides. So metals react with oxygen and they form metal oxides and these metal oxides are basic in nature. So we will talk about that later. Now let us look at some of the chemical reactions. So let us see how different metals react with oxygen. Now any metal reacts with oxygen to form a metal oxide. So let us take some examples. Let us suppose if you consider the metal magnesium. So magnesium combines with oxygen to form magnesium oxide that is MgO. So if you want to balance the equation, this is how it would be. So in fact, you would have seen this. If you want, you can perform this experiment in your laboratory where you take a magnesium ribbon and burn it. So when you burn it, so obviously it is reacting with oxygen because burning happens in presence of oxygen. So and then what do you get? You obtain ash. So the ash which you obtain that is nothing but this magnesium oxide. Not only magnesium, you take examples of other metals. For example, you take copper. So copper reacts with oxygen to form copper oxide. You take examples of aluminium. So aluminium also reacts with oxygen to form aluminium oxide that is Al2O3. So all the metals will form metal oxides. In fact, formation of this metal oxide can be evidently seen as well. So let us take the example of rusting. Have you ever seen that when uh, some any object which is made up of iron is kept outside exposed to air and water for a long time or let us say uh, you have some iron uh, say bucket or iron vessel and you have left it outside so obviously it is exposed to oxygen it is exposed to air and let's say that the air is moist so the air has water so whenever iron comes in contact with air and water what happens rusting takes place so you will see that on that iron bucket you can see some reddish color layer is formed so that reddish colored layer which is formed that is nothing but rust so this rust is the result of reaction of iron with oxygen in presence of water so let us talk about rusting now rusting always happens in presence of oxygen and water so that is why we say moist air so we will talk about iron now in case of iron how the exact reaction takes place so iron is fe this is iron so iron reacts with oxygen in presence of water so it could be moist air oxygen plus h2o could be moist air it could also happen that the air is dry but there is some water droplets on this iron substance so what will this form this forms iron hydroxide that is FeOH O3. So this is basically iron hydroxide. So if you want to balance the equation, this is how it would be. So we have balanced the equation. Now this iron hydroxide later dehydrates, that is it loses all its water content to form Fe2O3 H2O and this substance is nothing but this is rust. 
So the reddish color layer or the reddish color powdery substance which is seen on the surface of iron objects is nothing but this Fe2O3H2O that is rust. So this is how rusting of iron takes place. And uh, do you know, you would have seen this kind of rust in case of bridges and all. Bridges are made up of iron. So you will see the corner of the bridges, they get rusted when it becomes quite old because it, it has been exposed to air and water for a very, very long time. Now, in order to prevent rusting these days, there is a protective layer on top of iron of another metal which does not form rust. So that means rusting can be prevented. Now iron is not the only metal where rusting takes place. You can also see rusting of copper. If you look at copper vessels, you can see some greenish layer formed over it. See here, like in iron, you have reddish layer. In case of copper, you have greenish layer. So this greenish layer is rust. So this rusting of copper is due to the formation of copper hydroxide in presence of oxygen and water. So let us see how the reaction takes place in case of copper. Copper reacts with water, carbon dioxide plus oxygen. So this, this basically represents moist air. So that means the air has moisture in it. So this forms copper hydroxide which is CuOH2 plus CuCO3 which is copper carbonate. So due to the formation of this copper hydroxide, we see these green color rust in case of copper. So this is how rusting happens. So copper undergoes rusting when exposed to moist air. Now you see uh, all the metals, they react in presence of oxygen. So that's, that's how it is uh, with react when we talk about reaction with oxygen. Now the next question that comes to our mind is are these metal oxides acidic or basic in nature? So these metal oxides whether we talk about magnesium oxide or we talk about uh, copper oxide, we talk about aluminium oxide. So all these oxides they are acids or they are bases. Now acids and bases are defined by their pH value. Now how do we test whether a particular substance is acidic in nature or basic in nature? Now we will follow the simple litmus test. You, you remember the litmus test? What happens in the litmus test? Okay, so in litmus test we have a litmus paper like this. Now there are two types of litmus paper which are available. One is called red litmus, the other is called blue litmus. Now if any solution is able, so what you have to do is you have to dip the litmus paper into the solution and based on the change in color you can say whether the solution is acidic in nature or basic. So now what happens in this test is that if the red litmus turns blue, that means the solution is basic. And if the blue litmus turns red, that means the solution is acidic. So this is the simple funda of the litmus test. So this is how we can determine whether a particular solution is acidic or basic in nature. Now in this uh, section, our aim is to find out whether metal oxides are acidic or basic. So how do we do that? So first of all, we have to prepare a solution of metal oxide. That means we have to combine the metal oxide with water. So how do we do that? So let us take example of any metal oxide. For example, I take say magnesium oxide, correct? So how was magnesium oxide formed? When the metal that is magnesium combined with oxygen, it formed magnesium oxide. So how do we get this magnesium oxide? So now if you perform the same experiment, you burn magnesium ribbon, you get what? You get ashes. So the ash which you get, that is nothing but magnesium oxide. Now take this ash, mix it with water. So you are basically getting a solution. Now in that solution, so basically this solution is ash plus water. And what is ash? Ash is nothing but magnesium oxide. That is how you have prepared this solution. Now in this solution, you dip a red litmus and what do you see? You see that the red litmus has turned blue. So you see this was the original color of the litmus paper. But this portion has turned blue. 
so this shows that this solution is basic in nature so we conclude that metal oxides are all basic in nature now if you try this experiment out with other metal oxides there also you will receive the same result if you want you can try it out with the iron oxide for example you take some rust if you find any iron material which has undergone rusting where you can see rust take little bit of rust that red powdery thing and then try to mix it with water even though it will not get mixed properly but at least you try to mix it to some to a large extent and then you dip the litmus paper and you will see that case also the red litmus will turn into blue which shows that they are that is the rust is also basic in nature so we conclude that all metal oxides are basic in nature thank you Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.